So for me to get into the fall spirit, I am reading Stephen King's The Shining. So according to the internet, the instructions are you get the book from your local library, you read a couple chapters, and then you put it in your freezer for safekeeping so the monsters don't get you. Tonight we're going to carve some pumpkins and Yay. chat about some good fall recommendations, get you in the spirit. Why don't you tell them what you're going to carve? <laughs> what am I going to carve? It's a secret. Probably for the past 10 years, I've always carved a Ninja Turtle on my pumpkin. I'm doing just templates. I'm not doing anything super creative myself, but my Halloween party invitations say eat, drink, and be scary. So I'm gonna put that on a pumpkin. And then I think I'm gonna do these cute little, very happy ghosts. They're just in like, Halloween costumes. Just like the ghost behind us you probably see. <laughs> yes, this we got is, our- This is Jasper. We got our floating friend here. Jasper, the fun ghost. So Jasper might float in and out. Don't be scared. He's a friendly ghost. <laughs> He's a fun ghost. <laughs> yeah, all right, see you later. <laughs> see you, buddy. Okay. <laughs> do you want me to haul them all out or? Oh, I can do it with you. Sure? Yeah. You didn't want to do it last year, it's too gross. Oh, yeah, no, I don't mind. It's gonna be cold and icky. Thank you. I'm gonna try this pumpkin carving tool. <laughs> Careful. Yeah. So, recommendations. What is the first thing that comes to mind they have to watch when fall comes around? Oh, man. To get you into the spirit. Too many things. Just the first thing you think of, like. First this, thing I think of? This is my number one. To get me in the fall spirit. Are we talking fall or Halloween? Or kind Either. of both? Either? Yeah. Um, I always, oh, I always, <laughs> I always, I always think of the original Night of the Living Dead. George Romero, like, he sort of set, set the bar for, like, these zombie movies. I'm not, like, huge into zombie movies, but I once saw a portion of that movie when I was a kid, and it actually terrified me. But it wasn't my parents' fault, it was just on TV, and I just... Open channels and there it was and it just bothered me for so long and then now I watch it as an adult and it kind of still freaks me out. I mean the last time I got freaked out by it was when I was in Florida a couple years ago and I was just staying in my aunt's house. They were gone for the time being so I had the whole house to myself and I just like put this movie on. I've seen this movie so many times I know how it goes but for some reason the end of this film comes and it's just silence in this house and here I am like in Florida from the middle of nowhere. I just like that movie for the sake of it. it scared me when I was a kid. What about you? What's the first thing? Oh I got you... my lid. I'm just <laughs> stabbing away here. I remembered <laughs> I kind of had to go at an angle so it wouldn't just fall straight through. Oh I haven't done that. <laughs> <laughs> well we'll see what happens. <laughs> first thing I have to do when fall comes around. I don't like to be scared so I don't have any movie or TV show like that. So I start watching things like Halloween episodes of Home Improvement and Sabrina, Buffy, Roswell, just kind of in general, since it's a creepy sci-fi. In general, I'm more interested in TV anyway. So like, that's kind of what I do. As soon as September 1st hits, I'm watching fall and Halloween episodes of TV shows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even last year, like I was always like, we have to watch these things together because otherwise, because I live long distance, we only have so many opportunities to watch things together. So it's like, let's get in the spirit together so we'll <laughs> sometimes save some of the fall episodes of TV to watch or, or like, she was really excited to show me the new, the Buffy Halloween episodes and... Yeah, actually, else. Hush, more so than the actual Halloween episode. Oh. I was really wanting him to see that one, because I think that's the best Halloween episode. Yeah. Even though it's not a Halloween oh, episode. Oh, here's my end. Yay! <laughs> you got through. I don't think that'll fall through. It looks a little bit at an angle. Yeah, really I think I did okay. I've also had him watching Killing Eve. We just finished it last night. 
which is not Halloween, but it's just if you're looking for something with those murdery vibes, but it's not just Halloween themed. And it's funny, so that's a fun one. I know a movie for me that I have to watch every fall is You've Got Mail. Yeah, we haven't done that yet. We haven't watched that together yet, no. I mean, this year, this fall. It depends on your type. If you like to feel uneasy and scared, kind of like me. I mean, I'm not huge into horror movies. I appreciate, similar to The Night of the Living Dead, just like these old-fashioned horror movies from like the 70s and 80s. So like the original Halloween, and Halloween 2 is actually scarier. Obviously from the, the boyfriend tag, you probably noticed that I like to watch a lot of cartoons. So, um... There's a lot of lighthearted things that I like to watch to get in the Halloween spirit because, like, when you were a kid, you know, you watch the TV specials, the Lizzie McGuire Halloween special, even Steven's Halloween special, and, like, they're all pretty good. I really like to watch the old uh, Disney original movies, Disney Channel original movies, uh, that I keep saying, ah, oh, again. That's okay. I'm doing it again. I'm he thought so he said, ashamed. He thought he said, uh, and um way too many times I in the said. other video, but he really didn't. It wasn't, it was just natural because you're thinking. I mean, it, it wasn't like, a, you have nothing to say. But, but um, um, but, but, um, um, but, um, 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so some books. I like that are very creepy and Halloween-y. I pretty much talked about them in my bookshelf tour. Uh, uh, I think the Unwind Distology would be at the top of my list. So good and so flippin' scary. Oh, Shutter Island. That's a good creepy one. That's a really good psychological thriller that I read. That it's Edgar Allan Poe. <laughs> the Edgar Allan Poe collection. Ooh. Shutter Island is a book I read just because Leo DiCaprio was making a movie of it. It's so creepy. It's a psychological thriller. Yeah, I think psychological thrillers are more scary than yeah, most slasher movies. Stephanie yeah. likes the, the ones that get inside your mind. So. I've seen The Shining. I think she might like it. I think I might like it too. It's He it's, says it's more of a psychological thriller than anything, which is what I like, so... Did you ever watch Paranormal Activity? No. Too scary for me. That, that was too scary. Nothing happens, but that scared me when I when it first came out. I thought of the, the movies. I like to watch the old uh, Disney Channel original movies. Halloween Town, Under Wraps. Mom's Got a Date with the Vampire. Mom's Got a Date with the Vampire is a fun one. Cause with Van Hilda and was, was Mr. Sheffield. Caroline Ray. Yeah. Her name? Caroline Ray <laughs> and Maxwell Sheffield. There was Don't Look Under the Bed. That was like a really creepy one. Of course, I do like to watch Hocus Pocus. I know it's become like this staple to Halloween now. It's, it's just like a very in pop culture thing all of a sudden. Like the last few years, Hocus Pocus is everywhere. I have actually never been a fan of Hocus Pocus. I know I'll get roasted, but um, it's just not, uh, it's just not my thing really for some reason. I love witches and I love witchy Halloween stories, but Hocus Pocus doesn't do it for me. Zachary Binks, the talking cat. Don't you love talking cats? I love Salem. S I really do like Coco as well. Um, it's not Halloween themed per se, but it is Dia de los Muertos. I don't know about you, but that movie made me cry. Uh, yeah, it's very sad. It's very sad. It's just very personal. I like to watch the old Garfield Halloween special. Bob's Burgers has some good Halloween episodes. I've known over the years they always have, uh, the kids are about to go trick-or-treating, and they always dress up in these very creative costumes. Nothing elaborate, but it's always something budget friendly. There was one year Tina Belcher, she dresses up as a nun and she has a briefcase. And I'm like, what are you supposed to be, just a nun? And she says, I'm none of your business. <laughs> That's good. It's always random, but it's nice to see like, oh, as the years go by, it makes you want to see the next episode to see what the kids dress as. So I, I like that. They're still going. They're on their 10th season now, too. That's how I always felt about Home Improvement, because they always went all out for Halloween every year. So it was always like, ooh, what's Halloween going to be like and, this year? Yeah, it makes a difference. They would go all out with parties and costumes. and it's fun. Um, Yeah, they're just so fun to watch. They never get old. And my favorite Sabrina Halloween is A River of Candy Corn Runs Through It. That's a good one. But yeah, that's just, <laughs> I, I don't like know why. It's just so great. Basically just about Sabrina throwing a mortal... Halloween party at her witchy house, and uh, it's just really fun. I don't even know. And the furniture comes to life, the furniture and then, talks. then everyone comes. She's like embarrassed that all these unnatural things are coming to life, but her high school friends like, oh, it's Halloween. It's 
They just think it's all a gag. Someone's like, oh my gosh, you got a talking cat. Can you say Asher? Asher. Salem goes, loser. Loser. <laughs> oh yeah, so the Halloween episode in season four, Sabrina has started working at a coffee house. <laughs> and <Right. laughs> so her boss, Josh, and Sabrina are looking at these orange mugs and he's like, why does no one want to try our pumpkin coffee? And Sabrina's like, maybe because it's a hideous shade of orange and tastes like pumpkin? <laughs> like it was such an outrageous thing just a few years ago that people would want pumpkin coffee. So I credit Sabrina for starting the whole pumpkin coffee thing, even though no one wanted the orange pumpkin coffee yeah. in the show. Here he comes, checking out the pumpkin guts. What's up, buddy? And we're gonna take a break because my mom just made cookies and she has warm cookies across the street, so I'm gonna go get some. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to be drawing the outline of the Ninja Turtle on Adam's pumpkin. He had to go make a phone call, but he'll be back. You stuck with me for now. Let me just pull up the picture. So Adam and I went to a hayride slash corn maze thing last night. <laughs> I had never been to anything like that before. It's gonna show up on this pumpkin. I'll make it work. So I've never been to a corn maze and I was interested. It was a carved pumpkin lit corn maze. So I mostly wanted to go to see all of the carved pumpkins because I thought that would be really cool, which it was, but <laughs> there were a lot of obnoxious children there, which always spoils some of the uh, some of the fun. We still had a good time. We pretty much worked our way through the maze by which path was the quietest. Where are the horrible children going? And then we'd go down the opposite path. <laughs> My favorite pumpkin was Little Mushroom. It was next to Mario. And Mario was cute, but the mushroom was so cool. So the base of the mushroom was a white pumpkin, and then he had a, an orange pumpkin on top of his head, like his sh shroom top, like a little hat. It was so cool. I can hear Adam's phone call. So we mentioned in the boyfriend, meet my boyfriend video that Adam was hired on Radio City, which is so amazing. I'm so proud of him. He and the other percussionist in the show now have to figure out what shows they can play and what shows they need subs for. So he's on phone call right now trying to figure out those dates. It is very difficult to draw on a pumpkin. All right, I have finished my little outline of Leonardo here. It's hard to see and it was difficult to draw on this surface, but I think it will do. It'll be enough of a guide at least. I'm gonna work on my little pumpkin first, so I'm gonna go get this paper ready to go and then stick it on there and start carving away. Apparently I'm supposed to put plastic wrap over this pattern. I'm not sure why. Oh, I guess maybe so you don't rip the paper. I don't have plastic wrap. I only have press and seal. Hmm. All right, I'll figure this out. So this is my pumpkin all wrapped up. <laughs> I'm thinking now I could have just drawn this on the pumpkin and made it a lot easier for myself. So up, she's but... helping me by drawing. <laughs> I'm not talented like her. Oh, he's musical. Yeah, I'll play her song. Ready, Jasper? Woo! <laughs> The directions lied. This is way easier without any plastic on it. Five hours later. <laughs> it takes a while. Yes. We did it. Three pumpkins. The difficulty level on this one said it was the hardest. And I was like, oh, that looks easy. It was not easy. But it turns out our carving tools were too small for the pumpkin. Yeah, the, the depth of the pumpkin was longer than the knife blade. This is, this is our knife blade. Just like that. That yeah. little bit. <laughs> 
so we had trouble cutting through that one yeah. but we got there and they look great i'm really happy with them yeah so they're gonna be great for the party yeah <laughs> Yeah, good decorations. Oh, um, something else I always like to do is listen to old-time radio broadcasts. I got Stephanie to listen to the original War of the Worlds broadcasts from 1937, I think. You know, if we all know, we probably are, are familiar with that, how it freaked out a lot of the East Coast thinking there was an alien invasion. So the entire thing is an hour long on YouTube, but I like to listen just the first 30 minutes because... That's all it took to freak everyone out. That's very good. Uh, if you want to listen to like small stories that are kind of creepy, uh, I would suggest Inner Sanctum Mysteries. That's nice old time radio thing too. Sometimes they had special guests like Orson Welles or Boris Karloff doing uh, additional voices as actors and they do a pretty good one. If you're like thinking there's 200, 300 episodes, I don't know how to choose one. I'd suggest The Wailing Wall from inner sanctum that's that's a creepy one and i don't know what do you think i've stephanie listened to a couple and go ahead yeah yeah i enjoyed that one it's like the telltale heart but yeah and a wall very good yeah and i like to set creepy. the mood where you turn out all the lights Maybe except just have your pumpkin glowing yeah or or <laughs> just a candle um and i guess if you have you know your computer on like you can dim it as much as possible but i like to think like as dark as possible and all you gotta do is listen because you know old time radio in the 40s and 50s you know, they didn't have television, so they had to use their words to describe what the scene was. And I think that's, it's pretty cool. It freaks me out sometimes, too. It's not too scary, because then they interrupt with, like, commercials, like, Lipton tea. <laughs> it is B-R-I-S-K brisk for your get-togethers. You should buy it in bulk to save money. Lipton tea. <laughs> it's like, oh. So you listen to old commercials, too. It's fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Inner Sanctum. That's the name of the old-time radio show fun uh unique way to get into the halloween spirit that you don't always hear about that yeah definitely. i just stumbled upon it's awesome so yeah, yeah. Good one. so that's that's it okay well and if you guys have any tips for getting into the fall and halloween spirit let us know and that would be great so we can have some new things to try all right well thank you guys for watching hope you had fun carving with us and we'll see you next time yeah see you next time bye, bye. Thank you.